Welcome back to the garage and welcome back once again to the Ducati Hypermotar project. In the last episode, we started buttoning all this together. I've sort of now, I think, got over the worst of it. All my fears of wondering where things were going to go. I think I've sort of sorted. I think I've got all the wiring sorted. I've put the throttle bodies on while you've been away. So I've, I've fitted the throttle bodies now. And what I'm going to do in this episode is basically fit my uh, k &M filters. These have got an induction, these are an induction kit, so these have got like a Venturi, shape Venturi that goes inside of them. I think these are from uh, Cycleworks. I actually got these second hand, these. these came up on eBay. One of the great things about having a project like this, which runs over half a decade, almost, is that you can scan eBay and buy things when they come up, because these induction kits are incredibly rare to get hold of for these older bikes. That's another problem, isn't it? When you're working on an older bike, there's nothing sort of current being sold by any tuning companies anymore. But anyway, and these are really expensive. You can only get these from the US, and then you're into paying import duty. But I found an induction kit in the UK secondhand. So I'm gonna fit that. I've basically washed these filters out already. These have got to be re-oiled and fitted. Also, I wanna get on the, the headstock, the swinging arm, the swinging arm bearings fills me with dread. That's like the job I'm dreading the most with putting this bike back together. It's getting all the knee to roll the bearings in the swinging arm. It's got some other bearings on the other side. The manual's not 100% clear as if those bearings have got to be central or offset. So I'm a little bit worried about getting those bearings in. And you're meant to have a proper tool, a proper Ducati special tool. But I'm not talking about this one. There is a proper Ducati special tool to insert those bearings into the swinging arm. Of course, I haven't got that. So I've got drivers, pullers. You're going to have to see how we get on basically putting that swinging arm on. But that's the job I'm sort of dreading tackling. So if we can get that swinging arm just mounted to the bike today, I'm going to be over the moon. So uh, if that sounds of interest, grab yourself a cup of tea. I've got mine. And Chopsy, roll the intro. So here we have the pods, the pod filters from the induction kit, and you can see these have got a little Venturi uh, piece uh, inside. This is a Corsa Dynamics kit. I've just looked it up. I think that's what it is. There's two companies which used to make these. I think they do still make them, but they're about $500. You've got to buy them from the US. Then, of course, you've got to pay huge amounts of import duty on top of that as well. But I luckily found these secondhand. So what I've done, they're pretty, it's pretty good condition. I've already washed the filters out. I've got a K&N sort of cleaning recharge kit. I've cleaned the filters. All I've got to do now really is just re-oil them with the K&N oil, let that soak in, and then they're basically ready to be properly fitted to the bike. So I'm going to oil those now. Let's get that out of the way. So I had a quick look on the uh, K&N website. See so what you have to do when you're re-oiling is run an even strip along each of the uh, fins and go around the whole filter doing that and then uh, when you're done leave it 20 minutes or so to soak and touch up any light spots so there we go re-oiled ready for fitting filters installed looking uh looks great actually doesn't it looks great actually with those on there oh look at those big bad boys they're gonna they're gonna make a row aren't they <laughs> they're gonna get rowdy so i think now i'm going to uh i think put the headstock on put the yokes i'm just gonna put a bit of grease obviously around where it's gonna seat help it on oh that's cold that's that's frosty that's frosty. Keep that covered, keep it cold. Right, quick. Let's go and get the, uh, we go and get the hot ones. It's already greased. Hot, hot, hot bearing. That's it. Seated. So what I'm going to do now is just slap a load of grease onto that and uh, we fit the oaks. I'm also going to grease the shaft. Behave, children. That is, uh, <laughs> that's a lot of grease. I'm also going to put a load inside of the frame as well here. Oh, mucky, mucky booger. 
I've actually spent £300, yes, £300 on new torque wrenches. So I've got uh, three different size torque wrenches now. So that is the bottom yoke fitted. It's a, it feels a little bit tight to me, but I think I'll just keep my eye on it. I can always loosen it off a bit. It may free up a little bit, maybe because I packed so much grease in there, it's made it a little bit tight, but I'm gonna go with the recommended uh, torque for now, and we'll see how we get on. I can always loosen it a little bit later. Top yoke is here, and then basically that slides over that. Take the top yoke, put a little bit of grease, oh, not more grease. Oh, grease. I don't know if it should be that tight or not. It seems very tight. I could beat it down with a hammer, but I don't want to damage the finish. There we go. That looks bloody gorgeous. That's tight. That's tight and all. Look at that. Oh, that looks good, doesn't it? Look at that. That looks beautiful. That looks amazing. That has been two years in the making. <laughs> Standard bottom yoke bolts. We don't want those. We want titanium ones. Those or those. Look at those bad boys. Race fasteners, titanium fixings. Ducati standard ones. Ooh. Race fasteners, titanium. Yes, please. So it's been about a week and a half since I've last done anything to this motorcycle. I've been off in Jerez in Spain, racing around tracks with Michelin, so that's been brilliant. But it's time to get back to the Hypermotard and it's time to get back to the thing I've been absolutely dreading, which is the swinging arm, which you can see here, which is all wrapped up and protected. So I'm gonna put the, uh, the needle bearings and the main bearings into the swinging arm and mount the swinging arm to the motorcycle. I've finished putting on all the forks now. I've also loosened off the yokes a little bit, they're a little bit tight, I've now got them perfect. Even though I did it up to the recommended torque settings, I think because these uh, different sorts of bearings, you know, these are the bearings which are pushed together, I can't think what you call called, tapered bearings, and the standard bike doesn't have tapered bearings. So I think the, uh, you know, the standard torque pressure with a tapered bearing actually pulls it all a bit too tight. So I've loosened it off a little bit there. I've also bolted the stand down to the table now because it was getting a bit front heavy, so it's all bolted down. I was also a little bit worried about how much weight this table could take, but it'll take 250 kilos. So the plan will be get it to a rolling state with the wheels on and then lift it off with some help <laughs> to get it rolling and then put it onto the ramp to finish it. So, uh, so I don't want to build it up anymore with the tank and the bars. It's all too high to work on. So we do that once we uh, get it onto the ramp. I've also put the subframe on. And no, your eyes do not deceive you. It is now black. So I wasn't happy with the red. I've looked at some pictures of bikes with red subframes. They don't look quite right if there's too much red subframe. So sorry, Barry, <laughs> I've had it blasted by Adam and it's now lovely gloss black. Absolutely gorgeous. So if you want some powder coating doing, Adam is my man, he's superb. And he's got bikes, so he knows what you can powder. He knows what needs to be masked off. You know, it's important. You don't want to get your frame powder coat down to find out they, they, they've blown over the, even, the end, even the frame number. You know, he, he knows what he's doing when it comes to powder coating. He's now at Hampshire Custom Alloy Services, which is in Andover. So I'll put some links below if you want some powder coating done. And he's been doing a fair few bits on this now. Um, it's looking, oh, it's looking amazing. But let's do the swinging arm. This is the bit I'm dreading. If I can get these bearings in and get the swinging arm on, I think I'm on the downhill stretch, but uh, let's see. Nice brew. So here is the swinging arm, wrapped up nice and uh, tight so it's well protected. Don't want to be damaging any of the finish and, and the powder coat finish on this. I've also put a bit of insulation tape around these areas in case I get a slip. And I'm basically ready to put it on. I spent a long time studying the manual about how these bearings go on. There's some larger bearings here, which have got an internal sort of seat, as you can see there. So those are easy enough to push into the seat. Whereas the roller bearings, which go on this side, it's, it's got to basically see it four and a half millimetres from the outside, uh, and which means it's quite a big gap on the inside here. So it's taken a lot of looking and studying. It mentions that in the manual, but it's not clear which side. So I've, I've spent countless hours looking online at pictures of Hypermotard swinging arm to see how these all go together. I don't have the special tools 
to fit these bearings. You need a special drift and stuff like that. I don't have that, so I'm going to be uh, creative and use the swinging arm spindle to actually push those. That actually fits around the needle bearings perfectly, of course, because it's designed to go through. So that can actually, I'm going to use that to push the bearings into place. Ideally, in the manual, it says heat this up to 150 degrees, but because it's got powder coat finish, I'm going to see if I can put, apply a little bit of heat, but I don't want to damage any of the paintwork, so it's going to be difficult to, to heat it. So I think we're just going to more or less go with the, the frozen bearings. Hopefully they go without too much persuasion from my Ducati Special Tools. This is the only Ducati Special Tool I've got, this and the uh, chisels. So what I think we're going to do is fit the bearings in this side first, then I can, once they're in, because they seem like they're going to go in quite easy this side, and I can use that to centre, push the the uh, swinging arm spindle through, screw the nut on the end here and use that to push the bearings in the other side. That's my plan. How's that gonna work? Hope like that or, or like that? I'm hoping like that. Let's get the bearings out of the freezer. Well, that was easy. Let's do the other side. Same size as the steering head bearings. Well, that was easy. One side done. Little insert sitting between two bearings. Now on to the side I'm dreading. Also managed to whack my thumb with the hammer. Ow. First bearing. Try and get it square. Helps, doesn't it? And then that sits in there, you see? There we go, so it's about right. Greased up my seal, and that should sit nicely. There we go, work that in. Work that right round all the rollers. Ooh, yeah. Like a prostate exam. One side, done. Now we'll get the other side in now. Yeah, that's right up against the other bearing. Give a bit of grease in the dust seal. Pack it with grease. <laughs> that's a Saturday night sound. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. So bearings fitted to the swinging arm. I think it's all right. <laughs> I think it's done it all right. We'll find out in a minute because it's time to fit it. A little bit of copper slip, I think, on the shaft. Children. I have unpacked it to a certain amount so I can get it in. I've fitted the spacer there. There's a spacer on the inside. There's a spacer that goes on the outside. And this should... This is what I really could do with some... Give a sound, would you? Oh, I just stood there watching. Give a sound with this. Hold the table, would you? <laughs> this is where I regret greasing the shaft so heavily. Let's bring you around this side so you can see it being born. Bring in the grease with her. Ooh, smooth as a baby's bottom. Round of applause. Gorgeous. According to the manual, we want 75 Newton meters. 0, 70, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Leave all that grease on there. Oh, come on. There we go. Just a check. Woo. Does that have a feel? Oh, yeah. Still loads of free movement in there. Gorgeous. Woof. <laughs> so there we go, swinging arm fitted. Oh, I'm so pleased. Let's not leave that out there. We don't want to get it knocking the paint off the engine. So pleased that's gone in okay. I was really a bit nervous about that. Um, it's in there, it's tightened up. Now we can start putting the suspension back together, putting the shock in putting the rear hub on and uh, well, once I've got some tyres, 
get it rolling again, and then we can get it off of the table onto the lift. So I think in the next episode, I've got some quite exciting stuff to show you. I've been spending money on this project. Uh, people are asking, are you gonna do a build cost of this? No. <laughs> This, this bike has gone way beyond the realms of a you know, practical restoration. I mean, I, I've probably, I've, I've spent at least what I spent buying the bike. I mean, the amount of money I spent on this, I'm never gonna get the money back on this machine. I mean, that, that's, that's obvious. It's, um, it's, you know, this money is just to make this bike something really quite special. And because it's taken me so long to do this, now I just wanna finish it to the highest standard of all the best bits. And then, you know, just have something really special just to enjoy in the coming years. You know, I don't, I don't plan to sell this bike unless I ride it and I really don't like it, which I think is quite unlikely. Now, this is, this is a keeper. I'm not doing all this work just to get rid of it. And if I did ever get rid of it, I think it would end up being some sort of giveaway on the channel, some sort of raffle, because, you know, you're never going to get your money back on this. I don't want to be to the stage where you start. Anyway, I'm not even talking about <laughs> when I'm selling it. I'm not selling it. I'm not doing a breakdown on cost spent. Let's just say it's gonna be a lot of money. So uh, if you enjoyed the video, hopefully you have, give us a like. I think now, I think the next episode, I'm going down to see Hell Performance and we're gonna be looking at Hell's factory, going through how they make their calipers and then I'm gonna be coming away with a full set of Hell calipers for this bike. And they've gotta get some discs. So, and then once it's rolling, I'm gonna get the tank on, obviously, uh, and then get some fuel in it. Press that starter button and see if this damn thing will work. Who knows? It could be quite a lot of fault finding, troubleshooting if it's going to actually start. But that's not going to be the next episode. That's going to probably be two episodes away until we try and start the, the booger. But I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Give us a like, subscribe, share, all of that jazz. And I will see you on the next one. Cheers, guys.